Enjoy. Best of luck, pal. Enjoy. Awesome. So I just got yeah. Hello. Hello, how are you? <laughs> you look happy. I am. I'm, I'm quite delighted. Hello. And uh, what's your name? It's, my name is Deliso, Deliso Chaponda. That's Deliso an amazing Chaponda. name. That's a Malawian name. I'm Malawian. Right. Yes. So I'm from Malawi, but I live in Manchester. Why have you come on Britain's Got Talent? I've come to, to make the people laugh. I am a comedian. Oh, and yes! I'm a comedy writer. I would love the winner of Britain's Got Talent this year to be a comedian. Oh, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Who are you here with? So I'm here just alone. I, I, my brother, no, no, he wanted to come. He's a doctor. And he was like, either I should save lives or come with you. Were your parents disappointed that one of you was a comedian, one of you was a doctor? They were absolutely horrified because I was studying computer programming. So uh -huh. I had a future. <laughs> and I just decided, no, let me be a clown. <laughs> <laughs> so we shall see. Oh, darling, good luck. OK, excellent. Well, I'm at that age now, all my friends are getting married, and married people forget how horrible it is being single. They love to call me and complain about their couple problems. Always get, you're so lucky being single. I get home, my wife just starts nagging, nag, nag, nag. I'm like, hey, I have to nag myself. <laughs> I get home, I'm like, what time do I call this? <laughs> Why don't I ever do the dishes? Sometimes I think I don't appreciate myself. <laughs> I haven't always been a comedian. I did some weird jobs. I used to clean houses, and I'll admit I was tempted to steal. <laughs> I didn't steal because the Bible says, thou shalt not steal, but nowhere does it say, thou shalt not swap. <laughs> I took a stereo, left a Walkman. <laughs> took a plasma screen, left an Etch-a-Sketch. As I mentioned, I am from Africa. I moved here 10 years ago. And immediately I moved here, I heard a lot of British people talking about the financial crisis, the recession. I'm from Africa, what are you maniacs talking about? <laughs> you call that a crisis? If that's a crisis, where is UNICEF? <laughs> <laughs> where is Bono? <laughs> I have not seen one save the UK concert. <laughs> You can tell me it's a financial crisis when there are planes flying over Birmingham tossing fish and chips out the window. <laughs> it will be a financial crisis when there are ads on television saying this chav has to walk five miles a day <laughs> to get a bottle of WKD Blue. <laughs> You have got a financial crisis when India starts opening call centers here. <laughs> Can you imagine some poor guy in Mumbai calls his bank, ends up talking to a Brummie? <laughs> Thank you so much, Brummie. I mean, laugh after laugh after laugh. It just kept on coming. And I really want you to win the entire series. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think you could. And I think you have a golden future. Oh, I 
Thank you honestly. so much. I'm shocked and delighted. So am Great. I. <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, my face is hurting from laughing. I'm so pleased that Amanda Presto Golden Buzzer for you. You are brilliant, and I cannot wait to hear more from you. Well Thank done. You so much. Thank you very much. You should be a comedy superstar. Yes. All the jokes were really original, and you are incredibly likable. I couldn't fault it. Well done. Thank you. Well, not only do I think you're an undiscovered little star, I could see you owning your own show. Thank you. What you did was so funny and naughty <laughs> and unique. This is why we make shows like this, to find people like you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that welcome, and thank you, Amanda, for pushing that buzzer. Ever since you did it, my life has been bonkers. People approaching me on the road saying, well done, but the most common question I get is, you're from where? Is it Mali, Maui, Ma it's Malawi. And if any of you don't know where that is, it's where Madonna adopted all the babies from. <laughs> That's us. Yeah, you're jealous. I do miss my little brother. Uh, and Angelina took my sister, so. <laughs> and I've been in the UK a while. I was tricked into moving here. I was tricked because I was watching television and I saw an angry guy came on television and he said, oh, these immigrants take all the good jobs, all the good women. I was like, wow, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Sometimes comedy, it's hard to laugh sometimes because the news is full of depressing stuff. But I think the thing is, it's misleading because amazing things happen every day, little acts of kindness, but they don't report it. They put it on page 10, they open with the doom and gloom. If the BBC News was a mate of yours, you'd never go over. Look, I'm not going to that depressing barbecue. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out with Cartoon Network. <laughs> But it's an amazing time to be alive. People say stuff like, oh, oh the, I miss the good old days. The good old days were terrible. We've got amazing stuff. We've got Wi-Fi. Mm. Yeah. We've got rights. <laughs> Women can vote. Yeah. I'm black. 200 years ago, this would have been an auction. The Malawian press is a lot worse than your press here. I, I have to tell you, like I did the first ever comedy show in Malawi, which isn't an accomplishment. I'm the only stand-up comedian, right? <laughs> and I called the local press and said, send a reporter. The editor said, ah, ah why don't you uh, write the review yourself? Huh? You give me some money, I will say we wrote it. I was disgusted by the total lack of integrity in the Malawian press. But wow, that was the best review I ever got. <laughs> Seven stars! He's a genius! The African Michael McIntyre! <laughs> uh, but it's crazy I'm on television right now because my ex always felt I wasn't ambitious enough. She always used to be like, you're a comedian, come on, be more ambitious. I said, hey, I'm happy. She said, you're not happy. I said, I think I'm happy. She said, no, be more ambitious. I did not sign up for somebody who's going nowhere. I snapped. I told her, look, you knew I wasn't ambitious the day we met. Of all the women in the bar, I approached you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. I'm single now. <laughs> and I am looking for love, I'll admit. I'm looking for love. You know, got to get that citizenship, you know. <laughs> oh, but it's hard to date on a budget. I remember going for a date and the woman made a lot more money than me, which isn't a problem, we're in the 21st century, but I was ashamed. I remember the waiter came up, assumed I was gonna pay. Put the bill in front of me, I had to go, <laughs> I'll get the next one. I felt so pathetic watching her pay. I wanted so badly to be part of the transaction. So I just took the change. 
<laughs> I don't understand the British. I saw a beautiful British woman looking at a mirror upset. I said, what's going on? She said, can't you see? It's a fat mirror. I was like, what do you mean the mirror's fat? She said, this mirror makes me look fatter than I really am. I said, wow, I think my eyes have the same problem. <laughs> cultural misunderstanding. I'm from Africa. It's different. When we see someone overweight, we don't think go on a diet. We're more like, where did you get the food? <laughs> I think we gotta follow her home. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. It's so good to be back. And I just realized you've had Kenya, now Malawi. This part of the show has been sponsored by the old British colonies. <laughs> but it's been so supportive and so wonderful since I did the show yesterday. People have been coming up to me saying, oh, you were great, you are great. I hope you're better tonight. You were good, you were good. I hope you're better. Which is great, but you could not do this in any other part of your life. Could you go on a date and be like, my ex was really kinky, I hope you're better. But it's hard to be romantic, actually. I remember my ex looked at me once and she said, you know what, Deliso, I would die for you. I panicked. All that came out was, thank you. There was a long, uncomfortable silence. And then she went, would you die for me? I said, I'd take a punch. And she punched me in the face. <laughs> because you've had that post-Brexit divorce talks. Will you get a good deal? Will you get a bad deal? If you get a bad deal, don't worry. I've got the backup plan for you. Join the African Union. We'll take you. <laughs> Think about it. Your money's been devalued. You had MPs fiddling expenses. You're practically African. <laughs> the line sometimes that actually Simon yesterday you said you like that I'm non-PC but the brilliant thing is in the UK I can be non-PC I can cross the line the worst that will happen is one of you will send a complaint letter <laughs> I can do jokes about your government no problem this is not the same rules in Africa <laughs> you think I would ever go to Zimbabwe and do a Robert Mugabe joke <laughs> you think I'll go to North Korea and do a Kim Jong-un joke <laughs> it would be Britain's got arrests. <laughs> oh, but I love being here, I love being here. And I do get some weird racism sometimes, but it's very subtle. It's little things like, I was in a store the other day, somebody saw me, thought I was gonna steal something, started following me through the eyes. I just had a bit of fun, I just went. Can you help me? I want to steal this. But I'll admit, racism happens in all directions. It's not just white on black, it happens black on white, it happened in my own family. I was so ashamed. A friend of mine from Denmark decided to go backpacking across Africa. He passed through Malawi. Now, a lot of my uncles had seen white people on television, never met one. They got mighty excited. I got a call, he said, hey, your white friend is coming here, wow. You must stay with me. Don't worry, I can cook rice. I think he figured white people need to eat white food. So I let him stay with my rice uncle, Ben. But after two days, my uncle was looking very upset. I said, what's wrong? He said, ah, I think you give me defective white man. I said, what do you mean he's defective? He said, your friend, he acts exactly like us. I said, he's a human being. What did you expect? And with a tear in his eye, I was like, uh, I thought he was going to do some crazy white things. He just wanted a story for the pub. So when no one is looking, I went to Mateus. I said, yo, 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 yo. Next few days, just do some crazy white things. Give him a story. He said, no, I'm the first white man he's ever met. I think it's very important that I don't live up to any false stereotypes. 
I said, Mateus, you're not paying for food. You're not paying for accommodation. The least you can do is some crazy white things. So he slept with my uncle's wife. And then he took his land. <laughs> and then he made him a Christian. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.